Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I got out here really early today. It's just a gorgeous day and I'm glad to be out here. But here's an example of how you, the subscriber, can drive the content to a certain extent because I've been getting a lot of DMs, PMs, uh, questions, comments on Instagram and YouTube about three things. One, the frying pan I've been using, they want to know what it is. Two, can you show us how to do Bannock in the woods from start to finish? And three, well, Woods Walker, how do you keep yourself so fit? And fabulous. How you doing? Alright, here's what we're going to be talking about today. Here's my Bannock mix. I mix this up at home. And at the end of this video, I will link to another video with the recipe on how to put this together. Alright, and here's the pan. I just wrap it up in a handkerchief. And throw it in my pack, just like that. This one is made by Bromwell. Okay, and it's a stamped steel pan. I call it my Bromwell pan. Some people call them cowboy pans. Uh, some people call them a cool handle pan because the handle is double layer with an air gap in between and it stays cool while you're cooking. So these have been around a long time and stamp steel pans are kind of a favorite in uh, professional kitchens as well because they're lighter than cast iron and you can season them up so well. I bought this particular one on eBay and I'll link to the seller in the description below. It came in a package of this one, a 7 inch and also a 6 inch. I like the 7 inch. The 6 inch was a little bit small and they measure the 7 inches across the top. So inside the bottom is a little less than 7 inches, just so you know. So as I said, they are pretty non-stick because you season them. And you season them up just like a cast iron pan. I use the oven method. Do a YouTube search. You'll find out how to do that. And the initial seasoning was in the oven. And after that, I just kept using it. And the more you use it, the more you season it. So this is very non-stick at this point. The blacker it gets inside, the better it's getting. So at this point, eggs just slide out really good pan. This one weighs about seven and a half ounces. I have a large cast iron pan at home that I used to carry with me. It's a little bit smaller than this one and it weighs two pounds four ounces. So big weight savings in taking this one out. All right so let's make some bannock. Take your mix, add just a little bit of water, not too much. If you add too much, you'll be in trouble. And you want to save some water for coffee, right? Mix that right in the bag. Keep your hands kind of clean. So as I'm mixing this up, I can see that I think I need a little bit more water. It's a little crumbly. That's all right, we'll do that. Couple, couple tablespoons more. A 
I've made this many times and I usually end up adding too much water. So it's not the end of the world, but in a perfect world you'd add the perfect amount of water, right? That's looking good. Yeah, that might be it. I think that's about right. So, in the bag it looks something like that. It's holding its shape. Not too moist, not too crumbly. Now you get it in the pan. Some olive oil. Use whatever you have. If you have some leftover bacon fat, well, that's going to be delicious. So, after you've mixed your bannock, it should look something like this. You're going to get a little bit on your hands, but if you've mixed it correctly, it should come off easy. So, let's get this in the pan. Flatten it out just a bit. All right, let that go for a little bit. So what you don't want is your bannock to burn. So keep an eye on it. That's just perfect. Now I could just flip it and fry the other side and it'd be delicious. But what I really like to do is bake it the rest of the way. So I just tilt it up to the fire. I'll show you how I do that now and just bake the top the rest of the way. So what I think we will do is take this round, maybe put it right there, clear a spot, put that just like that. So while we're waiting on that bannock, I want to give a quick shout out to my coolest sub. All my subs are cool, but this is the coolest cat of them all. Liam, how you doing, buddy? I know you and your dad watch my videos together, and that's really cool. And if that's not cool enough, he showed me a picture of you wearing a backpack with your axe stuck in your belt. All ready for the trail. That was pretty awesome. And you're also practicing sleeping by the fire. That's awesome. And I know your dad wants to take you out in the woods soon. As soon as he can anyway. So I know you're going to have a great time. Thanks for watching buddy. So notice I'm always cooking on coals, never on a fire. And it's just naturally hotter way down here at the bottom, so you have to keep rotating the bannock so it cooks evenly. That's rising up actually, it's getting firm, won't be long now. Alright, see how golden delicious that is? That is done. Done! Oh yeah. Let's let that cool for a while. Not much to clean up there, is there? So clean up is pretty quick when a pan is properly seasoned. Just wipe it out. The odd time you may need to bring a little bit of water into the pitcher, but generally just a quick wipe is all that you need. Ready to go for the next time. So that's cooled down. Just nice, perfect on the bottom. Nice on top. Flaky on the inside. Oh 
Oh baby. That is delicious. So bannock is very simple to make. It's meant to be easy. It's meant to be done quickly on the trail. It's a quick carbohydrate for fast energy. And you should give it a shot. So yeah, I packed in the peanut butter. And how could you not pack in the peanut butter? Mm -mm. Want some? So the Bark River Aurora gets a big thumbs up as a peanut butter spreader. So that's it guys. All my secrets exposed in one video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate when you take the time to spend some time with me. So I'd like you all to take care. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate that. And a thumbs up helps me out a lot too. Take care. We'll see you on the next one.